Hey guys, I picked my wife up an early Christmas present, and she didn't seem too excited about it. I told her, just wait, and you'll love it once you find out all the cool features it has. So I ended up picking this guy up by trading in my 140, and I did that because I wanted the TIG welding capability. So let's break it open and see what's inside. Okay, okay. Yes, there should be a regulator there. And yes, I broke into the Christmas presents early and already took that out because this week I'd already gone and filled up my argon bottle. So that is the regulator that comes with it. And I'll be using that in the TIG video. Okay, I snuck a peek at the instructions too. Not that those were that exciting. From here, I sped up the video just because it's really not that exciting watching someone take a bunch of stuff out of a box. If you want to see exactly what's inside, you can look online or follow along. You obviously get clamps, ground clamp, before that was some wire, uh, some extra tips, nozzles. Here's the TIG torch. I do want to mention the one thing you do not get with this TIG torch setup is tungsten. The TIG setup will get its own video, which I will link up here whenever it's done. Another side note with the TIG is you do need argon with it. So a couple extra things if you want to do the TIG setup. Since it is a 220 machine, you do get a 50 amp 220 plug and your regular 110. The MIG gun, not your spool gun, is hidden underneath the hood. It's also the same MIG gun that is used with their 140. <clears throat> you do get a nice handy dandy cheat sheet, which will tell you for flux core, you want the ground to positive. And <clears throat> these DINs connections are really nice and easy for a quick setup and also to switch over when you're wanting to set up your MIG. The MIG gun has a little wing nut back there that you got to make sure you unscrew before you can slide in the MIG gun. Um, just with a little pressure, it goes right in. And this is just a connection for the trigger switch. Just pops right on. Now time for the wire setup. Make sure you tighten that wing nut back up uh, to clamp down on the MIG gun. Also, this is, does have a nice cast, I'm assuming aluminum, uh, wire feed setup. I'm pretty sure it'll last quite a long time, a lot better than their plastic setup on the 125s. It does have a 10 pound spool capability and spool gun ready. Don't let go. Oh wait, already did. The funny part about that is that is actually the first time I have ever let go of the wire and have it spooled out like that. Uh, well, to my dismay, I kept going, hooked up the wire, thinking that everything would be okay, and well, no, of course, it gets jammed. So let's repeat this process one more time, and we'll be up and going. Well, side note. If you screw up the first time, make sure you get all of the kinks out. If not, you'll be doing it yet a third time. For real, I think I have it this time. This little guy is the nozzle for the MIG gun. And this guy is for your flux core. It's not really necessary, but I do like to use it because it does keep all of the splatter off of the threads. And uh, keeps the lower end uh, nice and clean. Now taking a peek underneath the hood, it does have a really nice chart for a bunch of different settings. You'll notice you get the three controls, one for your wire speed, voltage, and inductance. Inductance. Well, that's a new one. And I am not going to get into that in this video. That could really be its own video within itself. So up on the upper right hand corner, you'll see the duty cycles. 
has a 40% duty cycle at 90 amps for the 110 and a 15% duty cycle at 200 amps for the 220. For these welds, I will be using some 14 gauge material and using some O3 flux core wire. I am telling you this because you probably can't see the chart in the video, but follow that along and it's telling you about 135 wire speed, 16 volts, and a 510 inductance. So let's set it up for that and throw down some welds. After cleaning up all that splatter, the welds don't look too bad. This is the only type of welding you would be able to do with the box. It obviously doesn't come with welding gas or tungsten for your TIG and electrodes for the arc. Keep that in mind if you want to use the other welding processes. Well, let's head on over to the MIG setup and try that out. For the MIG, I am using a C25 mix O30 wire, same 14 gauge still. So yada yada yada, you follow the chart, throws out some numbers for you to use, and we'll set it up to a 165, 17, and the same 5 to 10 settings. Well, after throwing down a couple flux core and MIG welds, I'd have to say it does a pretty good job. I'm impressed with it, and I like the well, and I like how the welds turned out. I am really excited to test out the TIG, and of course, like I mentioned earlier, that video will be coming here shortly. It will be linked at the end. So, if you pick up this machine, you are either wanting to learn another welding process, or you just want an all-in-one machine. Either way, don't let the consumables that it doesn't come with, like the gas tanks and tungsten, don't let that deter you from getting it. Just make sure you do your homework beforehand on what you want and what you will need. You know, for example, call a couple welding supply shops for prices for, you know, welding gas and for tanks. And if you're not in a rush, I mean, I pick up stuff off of classified ads all the time. That's where I just picked up my recent uh, Argon bottle. Uh, check those. There's always an old timer getting rid of his nice stuff for a fraction of the new price. Hopefully that helps. Let me know if you like the video. And if not, well, you stopped watching a long time ago. So see you next time.